So hi everyone and welcome to this video on proving uh, the relative unbiasedness of the instrumental variable estimator. So what we're going to do is we're going to first recall what an IV uh, what an IV is, what an instrumental variable is, and how it's used to be able to solve uh, the endogeneity problem that we could experience if we just use a pure OLS. And uh, we're going to derive the uh, and by, we're going to derive the proof uh, that uh, tells us that the IV estimator is unbiased for as long as uh, two unique properties will hold. So if you recall, right, in a basic regression setup, we have um, Y is equal to, say, in a bivariate case, you have beta naught plus beta 1 x 1 plus uh, some error term epsilon i, right? And in an idea, and as we said, one of the assumptions that we had made in OLS, one of the CLRM assumptions rather that we had made was that uh, there should be, if I take the expected value between uh, X sub i and uh, epsilon i, that should be equal to zero. That is the regressors or the independent variables must not be correlated to the error term. And uh, we, we discussed that that could have a lot of, um, that, that could not always be the case. So there may be instances wherein that sort of assumption is breached. And that happens when, say we have our Y here. So let me draw a diagram here. Say we have our variable Y, which is our dependent variable. And we want to explain Y using our variables that are X, right? So we have X variables and we use that to explain are y, right? So we use x to explain y. But uh, the problem is um, our error term, which is uh, epsilon here, our error term epsilon has a relationship with uh, x sub i. And in an ideal world, uh, this should not be the case. We should not have a relationship between x and epsilon, right? We should not have a relationship between our error term and the regressors in the model. So what we do to alleviate that uh, erroneous relationship is you know, we can sort of purify it in a sense by adding some instrument, which we refer to as Z. Okay, this is Z, which is our instrument. So let me do two circles around it just for emphasis. So this is our instrument Z. And Z okay, has to be related to X, right? So Z, has to be related to x, okay? Because it seeks to explain something about x, right? To, to try and purify the relationship. But it must not, okay? It must not be related to epsilon. So the characteristics of an instrument are number one, uh, the instrument, right? The instrument Z must, must be uh, related or in a sense correlated to the regressor X, right? To the regressor X, right? Uh, but what we do not want, uh, let me do a different color for it, is that we do not want a relationship. Okay, so we do not, uh, the instrument Z, instrument Z has no relationship with the error term, right? And we said that if, uh, if it had a relationship with the error term, we would just be compounding the problem, right? And uh, this is how fundamentally an instrumental variable works. It's a variable which is correlated to X, which seeks to purify the relationship between X and the error term. But in doing so, it must be uh, not uh, relevant or not related to the error term, right? Because if it were related to the error term, we're just compounding the issue. And also, by the way, Z should also not be related to Y, right? Because we just want that uh, exclusive relationship with uh, the X, right? So ideally, your Z must not correlate heavily with your Y, because if it did correlate with your Y, you should have included it into the model, right? So that's the case. And uh, let's just be more formal about these two properties that I highlighted. The first property is what you refer to as instrument relevance. 
instrument relevance. And the second property that I've highlighted here is what you refer to as instrument exogeneity, right? So that's instrument relevance and instrument exogeneity. So let me make a bit of space here. So uh, again, the goal of the video is we want to prove, okay, so prove that the IV estimator, mator, is unbiased, right? And actually, to prove this uh, claim, what we need to do is we just need to apply similar to the proof of the OLS estimator, and uh, we're going to apply these two properties that we just discussed. So let's start with the proof. Okay, proof. Uh, we start with the uh, the IV estimator, right? If you recall, the IV estimator is given by uh, the equation beta hat IV is equal to Z transpose X inverse Z transpose Y, right? So that's your IV estimators. And uh, just as an aside, okay, if you recall your OLS estimator is uh, beta hat OLS is equal to X transpose X inverse X transpose Y, right? So just as an aside, so we start with the IV estimator and we can plug some things in. So notice beta hat IV is equal to Z transpose X inverse Z transpose Y. But Y, okay, Y, note that Y is equal to in its multivariate form, that's X beta plus U. So we just multiply this times X beta plus U, right? And what we do with this is we're going to sort of distribute this term to both of these uh, terms here, right? Uh, I'm sorry, not u, but epsilon. Uh, give me a moment just to correct. This is epsilon, because right? we just want to be consistent with the notation. So this is epsilon plus epsilon. And then we get this one. So that's z transpose x inverse z transpose x beta, right? That's the first distribution. Then the second one would be Z transpose X inverse Z transpose epsilon, right? And we notice immediately that if you see, this is a matrix here, and this is also a matrix, but it's this matrix here in its inverse form. So if you multiply the inverse times the original, you simply get an identity matrix, which is that case, and an identity matrix multiplied to anything is equal to that something. So this fundamentally collapses to beta plus z transpose x inverse z transpose epsilon. So that's beta hat IV. And uh, if we start taking the expected value, right, to go for the proof of unbiasedness, we take the expected value, the expected value, then uh, what you'll notice is we get the expected value of beta hat IV is equal to expected value of a constant is beta. So that's just beta. Plus we get two things here. So let me put the inverse to the denominator just uh, so that we can clear it out. So this is expected value Z transpose X, right? And expected value Z transpose uh, epsilon. And these two things should be starting to look fairly familiar to you. And that's basically because these two expectations at the bottom correspond to these two properties. So the numerator uh, term here is our second property, which is instrument exogeneity. So notice this is telling me, okay, the ex, uh, let me use a different color, the expected value of Z transpose E. Well, if I uh, buy, okay, buy instrument exogeneity, exogeneity, right? the expected value of Z transpose E, which is what's the relationship between the instrument and the error term, okay, that should be equal to zero, right? That should be equal to zero. And what we need is for the denominator to not be equal to zero for this entire thing to be, for this the entire second term to be equal to zero, which is what we want. So uh, that, the, that denominator term actually is our first property, which is instrument relevance. So by instrument relevance meant relevance, right? Er, uh, relevance. 
the expected value of z transpose x should not be equal to zero because you should have a form of relationship or some correlation between the regressors and the instrument, right? So that should be non-zero. And something that is zero, right, divided by something that is non-zero is a zero thing. So therefore we get our conclusion that the expected value of the IV estimator is indeed equal to beta. And this completes our proof, right? So therefore, therefore the IV estimator is unbiased. And we close the proof here, right? So that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope you were able to see how simple the proof was. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for your attention.